crop lenses on full frame bodies. Six months ago, I would have told you there's no reason to. Now there are several valid reasons to, and in fact, it's part of our daily workflow. So let's look into it a little bit more, talk about how it applies to Canon, Nikon, Sony, and Pentax formats, stills, and video, and we'll go over the math behind it. If you're interested in the opposite of this, putting full frame lenses on crop bodies and all the implications to the sharpness and speed of your lens, go to sdp.io slash crop. There's a useful video there. If you're interested in what crop factor is in general, go to sdp.io slash crop. I just want to say this for the record. Crop factor is a conversion, like converting from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. It doesn't change physics and it does not change the exposure settings on the camera. That's just a common point of confusion. So I want to be absolutely clear. First, a formula. If you're going to put an APS-C lens, like a, a lens designed for small format cameras, on a full frame body, this is how you can predict how many megapixels the resulting picture is going to be. And this formula is not as complex as it looks. You take the megapixels of the full frame camera and you divide it by the crop factor squared. So if you're using a 36 megapixel D810, you divide 36 divided by the crop factor 1.5X times uh, squared, 1.5 squared, and you end up with the resulting number of megapixels that the APS-C lens will be producing when it's attached to that full frame body. A simpler way to phrase it is just take the full frame megapixels and multiply it times 0 0.44. Here's the general effect. If you put an APS-C lens on a full frame body and you take a full frame image, what you'll see is very heavy vignetting. Uh, not everybody knows this, but all lenses, the outing output from the back of the lens is generally a circle. And of course your sensor is usually rectangular. So what we see are, are kind of black corners around here. This was taken with a full frame Pentax K1 and an APS-C lens at 18 millimeters. So you could see if you were to, to make a little crop sensor in the middle of that, it would completely fill the frame. But on a full frame sensor, it doesn't go edge to edge. And this is the reason we don't generally put APS-C lenses on full frame bodies because we get these kind of weird, ugly edges. But some APS-C lenses actually fill the frame. And in fact, that 18 to 55 zoom, if you zoom into 55, these are just pictures around the office. These are not good pictures. If you zoom in to 55 millimeters, it pretty much fills the frame. And the corners here are still a little bit dark. There's still a little bit of heavy vignetting, but you can see this APS-C lens actually fills the frame. And that's actually the case on a lot of lenses, particularly those Pentax lenses. So there, you might actually be able to get decent results with APS-C lenses on full frame bodies, even without cropping. You also have to, if you are taking a crop from the center of a full frame camera, you have to factor in the, how it's going to change your noise, because now you're going to get noise characteristics that look a lot like the smaller sensor. And this is a, another complex looking formula that actually isn't that complex. It's the full frame noise multiplied times the crop factor squared. Or you can just say easily that you're going to get 2.25 times more noise if you have to crop the image down to the center of the image. And people will say, oh, it's the exact same image. It's just cropped. But what you'll have to do is you'll have to scale that smaller portion of the sensor up to the same display size, because obviously you don't display pictures smaller if they're taken with APS-C lenses. You display them all the same size. So all the noise in that center part of the image is getting expanded. It becomes more visible. 2.25 times more visible in fact. So you get more noise if you do this. Now let's talk about how each of these different camera manufacturers handles putting crop lenses on full frame bodies. The Canon world does not allow you to do it. It's weird. They, they physically prevent you from putting APS-C lenses on full frame bodies. If I grab this and I try to connect it, it simply will not connect. It seems to me it's just the way they design, design the, the lens mount on the camera because APS-C lenses accept both lens, APS-C bodies accept both lens types. So I think they could do it. And I bet if you were an, uh, a hacker, you could swap the mount out and allow you to put APS-C lenses on full frame bodies. But for now, for those of us more conventional, this is not an option in the Canon world. And I'll tell you in a minute why you might actually want that. In the Nikon world, you can put APS-C lenses on full frame bodies. The Nikon bodies will automatically detect this and by default, they'll crop the image down. So it will kind of work seamlessly. When you look through the viewfinder, 
cameras like the D810 will draw a box around the part of the image where it will get cropped to. The D5, the high-end camera, actually does a really nice thing where it, it kind of shades out the edges and, and makes it look really actually pretty good. Um, but you're going to lose a lot of megapixels when you do this. So if you put an APS-C lens on a 36 megapixel D810, you don't get 36 megapixels, you get 16 megapixels. I point this out because a lot of people want to take 36 megapixels and divide it by 1.5, and they forget that you have to do this linear to uh, two-dimensional math conversion because crop factor is a one-dimensional math and sensors are two-dimensional planes. So doesn't matter. Just remember, crop factor squared. If you're shooting with a 24 megapixel camera like a D610 or a D750, you don't get 24 megapixels. You actually, actually get 10 megapixels. So these are really low numbers. You wouldn't necessarily want to do that. You could pick up a uh, very inexpensive D3300 and get 24 megapixels out of that same APS-C lens. And, you know, you'd be getting an extra 30% uh, more, more pixels and thus very much sharper images out of a lower end body. So for that reason, I tell people, if you want to use an APS-C lens, just get an APS-C camera generally. On these 24 megapixel cameras, 10 megapixels is very low resolution. And of course, again, silly, since you could just buy yourself an APS-C body for pretty inexpensive. Um, but let's look at the effect if you wanted to use one of the most desirable APS-C lenses, the, the pro quality, one of the few pro quality APS-C lenses, the Sigma 18 to 35 F1.8. If you attach it to an APS-C body, it will create images that are very similar to a full frame 27 to 40 f 2.7 at 24 megapixels on a D5500. And you get fantastic results. We tested that combination. It was wonderful. Another APS-C camera with lower megapixels, the D500, same, same full frame equivalent here, but at 20 megapixels. But when you start to put it on a full frame body, it doesn't make much sense, the D610. Again, it behaves like a 24 to 27 to 40 lens, but you get only 10 megapixels. So the point I'm getting at here is you'd probably be happier just grabbing a 24 to 70 f2.8. Tamron makes a, a decent one that's pretty low priced. You could pick it up used for about the same price as this, and you'd get more zoom range. You'd get more megapixels, and uh, the like equivalent images would would be the same. You'd just be using the whole sensor instead of the center portion of the sensor. So that's what you should normally do. You normally should not put crop lenses on full frame bodies. Just get full frame lenses for full frame bodies. But we'll talk about some exceptions like the Nikon D5's 4K video. The D5 records 4K video, but only in APS-C 1.5X crop mode. The reason for that is it has a 20 megapixel sensor, but that uh, it can't read all 20 megapixels and, and cram them into eight megapixels of 4K video. The processor just isn't powerful enough for that. So what it does is it crops out just the center eight megapixels from that 20 megapixel sensor. Uh, 20 meg, yeah. So you can put an APS-C lens on there on the D5 and it works perfectly, <laughs> which means that there, Nikon only has two cameras that record 4K video, this and the APS-C D5, and they both have crops. So if you use the D5 to record, you're actually recording a small center of your APS-C lenses but the high-end D5 will actually record the full output from your APS-C lenses. So you could go back and slap on a Sigma 18 to 35 on your D5 and get excellent, excellent video, even suitable for low light with that super fast F1.8 aperture. So it's something to keep in mind. If you do want to record 4K video on the D5 and you hate that 1.5X crop factor, you might get better results by putting on APS-C lenses. Um, to go back to Canon, the 1DX Mark II here also records 4K video internally. It also has a 1.5X crop factor. And I wish I could put APS-C lenses on it, but I can't. I'm stuck with full frame lenses, which when they're cropped down like that, they're going to be less sharp than comparably priced APS-C lenses. At least that's what we've found. It also means I don't get the option of using amazing lenses like the Sigma 18 to 35 F1.8 or the Sigma 50 to 100 F1.8 designed for APS-C. They simply will not physically fit the body, limiting my filmmaking options. Sony, this is a really interesting world because the Sony a7R II, which we film with constantly, it's kind of our default camera, 
is a full frame camera and it allows you to record a full frame 4K or crop down to a 1.5X 4K. And for the longest time, we were using only full frame lenses. And then it occurred to me, I could actually put APS-C lenses on it and film with that. And what we've been doing for a month now, maybe more, is using an APS-C lens on our full frame camera. And that's the default way that we film. We're using the Sony 18 to 105 F4. It's a great lens with a massive zoom range and it's quite sharp. And because it's designed for APS-C, it works perfectly in 1.5X crop mode. The thing about the a7R2, the image quality is actually better in crop mode. <laughs> it has less noise with the smaller sensor and more noise when you record full K video with the full sensor. And that's because it has to skip pixels. It can't process all the information from the full sensor, but it can process all the information from the 1.5X crop. Point being, we get better, better results putting a crop lens on a full frame body it's weird, but we're really happy with it. And we still put full frame lenses on it sometimes when we want the you know shallow depth of field or some special effect, but that's kind of our go-to lens. So when you look at it, if you were to shoot stills, a full frame A7R2 produces 42 megapixel stills, but if you put an APS-C lens on it, it's gonna drop down to 18 megapixel stills. Low resolution for a very expensive camera, you'd be better off getting an A6300 or something. If you put it on a 24 megapixel A7 II, same situation as a D610, they drop down to very low resolution 10 megapixel stills. So you probably don't wanna do that. But again, video is something different. Either way, full frame or 1.5X crop with the A7R2, the 4K video is gonna be eight megapixels, but in the 1.5X crop mode, you have half the noise. So you actually get cleaner images, better results, and that's why we changed our workflow. Why not get the native APS-C A6300? Well, it doesn't have a headphone jack and we kind of gave up on it because it overheats regularly. <laughs> the A7R2 overheats sometimes, but the A6300 overheats on a regular basis, so we never use it. Pentax. Now, this is another interesting case because they just released their full, first full-frame camera, the K1, and we like it a lot. But they've been making APS-C cameras for a long time, and they have a massive uh, library of great quality APS-C lenses and a very small library of full-frame lenses. And one of the things Pentax is doing is they're advertising, actively advertising, that you can put APS-C lenses on the full-frame body because they want to offset this perception that they don't have very many full frame lenses. This is an, an ad that I found in Rangefinder magazine. Uh, enhance, <laughs> zoom into the corner. The Pentax K1 can be paired with both your full frame and APS-C lenses to expand your shooting capabilities. So again, when you do that, when you put an APS-C lens on your K1, suddenly this 36 megapixel mon monster becomes a 16 megapixel camera. Assuming you have it in the auto mode where it automatically crops 1.5x. You can turn that off, and again, some lenses won't require you to crop as much, but it varies because some Pentax lenses fill the frame, some don't, there's this whole like discussion about it. But if you put it on a K3 Mark II, you'll be getting 24 megapixels out of those APS-C lenses with a less expensive body. So I still maintain if you plan to use APS-C lenses, just just go ahead and use an APS-C camera. And I, I, I wouldn't push people towards getting the K1 just because they want to use APS-C cameras, lenses, just because you can. Because again, dropping to 60 megapixels is going to be a huge sacrifice. I would tell you, make sure you have the full frame lenses that you want, or at least you know what they, what, know what suits you. This was a nerdy video. If you want more camera nerd videos where I dig deep into how camera gear works, it's just something, that's something I like. Go to stp.io slash geek. There's lots of nerdy videos there. Subscribe, it's free. I'll have lots of new videos out and, and I have lots of books teaching the art of photography, important things that make more of a difference than all this technical nonsense like posing, mood, expression, composition, balance. Uh, Stunning digital photography, you can pick it up at Amazon or at sdp.io slash store directly from us. It includes 14 hours of video, only 10 bucks. I also have books with video on Lightroom, Photoshop, and photography equipment, all this technical stuff. Whatever you're into, go to sdp.io slash store or Amazon. Search for Tony Northrup. Thanks. Bye.